Hey folks, good to see you again. Captain Matt here. And today we're going to talk about uh, how to grow wheatgrass from start to finish. I, right now I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I probably have eight pads of wheatgrass growing. It is a wonderful source of uh, nitrogen for your uh, worms. At a certain point, you just can't give them table scraps any longer. You don't have enough and we really have to produce some good uh, nitrogen for them to live on. So we've had so many people ask, how do you grow it? I'm gonna take you from day one all the way to laying down an entire pad inside a worm bin and see how the worms enjoy it. You're gonna be flabbergasted when you see how the worms are eating uh, a pad of wheatgrass. So let, let's take a look at uh, how, how they enjoy wheatgrass because you know every now and then I get people that are trying to help me out, giving me comments saying, worms don't eat wheatgrass, what are you saying? You know, well, come on over and let's take a look. This is a, a bin that is almost finished building, but we have a few worms here. Oh, look at the pad of wheatgrass here, my goodness. I think I see a worm on top, don't you, Luke? Well, there's, there's thousands of worms on top. And you know what they're doing? They're eating inside and out of this wonderful pad. I'm gonna pull the pad up. It's gr The pad grows in. So as we pull it up, we're gonna see worms underneath. But most of all, th there's gotta be uh, four, five, 600 uh, mature worms on the top here. And they're just having the time of their life. It's, it's a really great food. The truth of the matter is if you go to Farm Tech online and get their catalog, right now, farmers are feeding wheatgrass grown much like we are growing it without any soil, just pure wheatgrass, and they're feeding it as feed for major, major herds of cattle. It's an amazing thing. Go to Farm Tech, you'll see it. They're selling all the equipment to do it for major operations. But we're a small worm farm, and uh, yet our worms like good, fresh produce that breaks down really easy. Now I'm gonna kinda of take you backwards a little because just the way I have this all set up. But we have a number of stages of wheatgrass here. Here I'm looking at a wheatgrass that's about eight days old. It's starting to get floppy and falling over a little bit. It's growing irregularly. Then I have a six day old wheatgrass over here. And it has a little more body, a little more green to it. Over here, we're looking at wheatgrass that is about four days old, two day old wheatgrass. And now I'm gonna take you and show you what a one day wheatgrass looks like. And it's right there. We're gonna show you how to start the whole process. So we're gonna begin with today because I need these two trays to grow my next wheatgrass in. I'm gonna take these and by the way, the containers we're using, I picked up at a restaurant supply. They're stainless steel. You get two at, two at Costco or at Sam's, two in a package for around $20, I think I paid for the two of them. I've had them for years and years and years. They're just not going anywhere. So I'm gonna take this pad of wheatgrass and I'm gonna take this pad. By the way, look at the strength of that root system. I mean, it's powerful. It's really awesome. And these two we're gonna put aside and we're gonna put them in with the worms. And we'll do that right at the end. But so now that we've, how do we start growing wheatgrass? Well, the first thing is you have to start with some bedding because if you just lay seed down, uh, controlling the moisture is just too hard. Sometimes they rot, sometimes they grow, sometimes they don't. What you can use for the bedding for the seeds is really anything. I've used sand, I've used gravelly soil, but I happen to have a big pile of compost. Well, the worms are gonna eat the compost anyway, so I'm gonna take uh, this compost here and dump it right in. This, by the way, has been in the microwave oven for three minutes, very important, because if you don't put it in the microwave, you're gonna have wild, wild plants growing in with it, and you're gonna have a lot of bugs hatching, and you'll find that you have all sorts of critters in your wheatgrass. Now, 
we juice a lot of our wheatgrass and we don't want critters in our juice. So we, we simply put it in the microwave three minutes. It kills everything. And I'm gonna go get my other one and it's the microwave is ready. So we'll take this one. This just came out of the microwave. If you look at it, it's gonna be smoking as I pour it on here. There's a lot of heat in that baby. See that? Now, what do we do about that heat? Because I want to get going. I got things to do. We're just going to spread it out a little bit. And because it's not moist enough, you want to have your soil uh, nice and moist. You don't want to drown the seed, but you want your soil moist. So I'm going to take a sprinkler and just uh, uh, give it a good sprinkling. And I know from experience that is enough to bring it to this stage and at this stage here, I'm gonna to have to start watering it again. Remember that was eight, six, four, and two day old. So around four day old, you're gonna to have to watch it. First of all, we're gonna plant here, but we've gotta start, you've gotta take your seed and soak it for at least eight hours. I soak mine generally 24 hours because I do this in the morning, every morning, and um, the next morning I drain it. So. This cup here holds about three, almost three cups of seeds. And I'm gonna put about a, a cup and a half in this jar and a cup and a half in this jar. And uh, these two almost look like this guy's got a little more than that guy. So yeah, oh, and now too much that way. All right, now we're about even. So we now have approximately uh, three quarters of a cup of seeds in these jars. You don't have to get too fussy. You want to use a cup. It doesn't matter. I'm going to fill this with water and fill this guy with water and give it enough because it's going to absorb a lot of the water. And, and then those seeds are going to just be put, put aside anywhere. doesn't matter where they are. You're just trying to activate the seed with the water. The seed is going to increase to this size here. That we started with that, and this is what we ended up with. So we'll let those soak overnight, and overnight in the morning, we'll dump the water out, and we'll just let them set for one day. One day old is what this is. These are seeds that I soaked overnight, and I let them sit for one day. And I'm gonna pour them out for the camera to see this, because if you look real close, you'll see that these are already growing after one day. That's where you want them before you, before you start spreading them out. So the next step, once you see growth coming on your seed, again, soak it overnight, let it sit one day, the following morning, you're gonna find this kind of growth on it. And what we wanna do then is take our three quarters of a jar of seeds and just sprinkle them. It, it, there's not a science to this. It's just sprinkle them as evenly as you can. This is, we're, we're planting a lot of seed in here because we want a very dense grass to grow. That is what's called a, a real dense grass. And the one next to it doesn't look dense, but it's gonna grow up just like this one because I, have, I do the same thing every, every time to the seeds. So this guy's all ready to go. And now I'll take the other jar again one day in water, one day outside of water and give it a chance to grow. And we have the same thing. We've got loads of growth on the seed. And now we're gonna spread that seed. Uh, we're using here, we're using um, red, uh, red winter wheat. Uh, you can use anything. You can use white wheat. You can use barley wheat. You can use any grain you'd like. I just find that the wheat, the red winter wheat, grows really well for me. And because it grows well, you know, what, if it works, why change it? And it's worked for us. My wife and I have been juicing wheatgrass now for over 15 years, and it just works for us. So the next thing you wanna do is make sure you have enough moisture in there. And the next step is this, is we're gonna cover them. I have, I'm gonna use a cover that covers both of them. And uh, we just throw a cover over it. And I'll leave the cover, just pat it down a little bit. You're not gonna hurt it as long as you're not too forceful. And we're gonna put the cover on. 
The cover is simply for one thing, holding the moisture in as it starts to root. If you notice, the pad that we grew was massive. But see, this is a baby pad. It's just starting to grow. And it doesn't take long. Remember, eight days, six days, four days. We're only two days old. And this is already starting its pad. So as we grow, put the cover on. You can pat it down a little bit. Leave the cover on. I always look at it in the morning. The next day, and I'll just take a peek at it. And if I see it starting to throw green shoots upward, I take the cover off. Because if it's throwing green shoots upward, it also means that the root system is going down and starting to form uh, its production cycle. Once I know it's growing well, I take the entire cover off like I did with this one, and the wheatgrass grows wild. Now all you have to do is just wait and watch and grow. Keep, your, keep the wheatgrass moist. Again, by the time you get to this stage, you are definitely going to, if you find it sticks uh, to the bottom, and this is sticking, I, I literally have to pull it to get the pad up, as I did here. I can't even get that one up. That means it's hungry. It wants some water, and all you have to do is water. The wheatgrass is not looking for any nutrition from the, uh, the soil that you're using, because at this stage, all the nutrition is coming out of the seed. When it gets to that seven day, eight day period where it starts to get a little floppy and stops the, the upward growth, that's when we turn it upside down and we put it in the worm bin. So let's go ahead, let's go to a worm bin. And the two that we pulled out of here, we'll go ahead and just plant them in with the worm. But what I do is I take the pad just like this and I just get it down there, okay? Then I'll take a watering can and I'll just activate it a little around it. Just give it a little water. Okay. And then we cover it up. And after a certain amount of time, that pad looks like this pad. Come on over here. Because we're going to take this pad here. And we're going to put it in this guy. This pad here in this, this is one of my breeder bins. And this pad, look at the worms up top here. They are, they are eating away. They got a little worm chow two days ago and they're still enjoying the worm chow. But this is a pad that we placed in here. It wasn't a week ago. They've just devoured the pad. It's, it's something else. So what I do, I leave the pad right there and I take a new pad and just place it on top like that. Push it down a little bit. Mark, can I have that watering can there? and just give it a little shot of water. Now, if you don't get worms up top right away, don't worry about it. Sometimes I put a little food on top to see how my worms are doing. And when I do, when I put a little of Captain Match worm chow up top here, it brings the worms on top of the pad. That's why we had so many over there. And it just tells me, it shows me, my herd's looking really, really healthy. And so I go ahead and close this up and I won't open this up again until it's time uh, for a little worm chow. And so that's the process. And as they eat it, we feed them more. My system is using two jars, each one of them having approximately three quarters of a cup of seed. Let them sit overnight. The next day I let them sit and the next day I plant them. And if once I let them sit, then I'm starting another system. <clears throat> My system is such that I'm growing approximately one pad every day for my uh, small worm farm here, and they are devouring it. So folks, I hope that helps you. Don't hesitate to ask questions. I wanna show you one other thing. We're gonna do a video on a smaller worm, continuous flow worm bin. And I'm not going to talk about it a lot today because we're actually going to feature it in one of our videos. But it's right over here. And um, I just thought while we're here, let's take a look and see what's going on with this pad here. And uh, here we are again. There's a pad that's probably just a few days old. And again, I probably put a little food on top. But look at the worms up top. They're active. 
They are also eating up all the, the, um, the growth and they're getting more than enough of the nitrogen and other uh, great stuff that they need. And this is just in a home bin, a small bin. It's not a professional bin. It, it can be used as a professional bin, but it's not. It's a home style bin. And we're almost to the top. When we get to the top, we're gonna show you how to build one of these and be able to, if you're not looking to run a business, we want you to be able to have a really good active worm bin at your house and growing wheatgrass is not a bad idea for your worms at any level that you're at. So folks, again, don't forget the bottom of the page, look at the all sorts of uh, uh, places that you can get help from. And if you think of it, subscribe with us. It, it's, uh, it helps you, it helps us, and we're real excited about being able to show you all this today. So that's my wheatgrass experience. It went from juicing for my wife and myself, and I used to push it on my kids, but they didn't like it very much, so we kept it to mom and dad. And uh, now, lo and behold, our experience of juicing wheatgrass is now our major supply of food for our worms. Until next time, folks, have a wonderful day. And, and uh, don't forget, folks, we're worm people. Let's, let's, let's stick together. Let's help each other along the way. Let's share everything we know with one another. See you real soon.